What's happening, guys? It's your boy. Talk a little bit about Survivor and my latest tweet of me saying I'm the best to ever play this game. Tweeting to at Jeff Propes and at Survivor, I'll show you how great I am. Not my quote, but I love it. Behind me is a food trailer that I'm building, by the way. I'm building. Coming soon to your neighborhood. So, I want to explain myself. Do I think I'm the greatest player to ever play the game? Yes, I do. Did I ever win the game? No, I did not. I guess I might need to put it more in perspective. I had the greatest performance in the history of the game, and that performance will never be done again. Ever. By anyone. It is done. It's like Michael Jordan playing ball. We will never see this kind of performance again. And yes, I just comp compared myself to Michael Jordan. I want to read you a tweet that made me want to do this video. This is the tweet. This guy said he rewatched. I'm not going to say his name. I didn't get his permission, so... Uh, he rewatched season 19, travesty that Russell Hance did not win. Found three idols without clues. Overcame a four to eight split at the merge. Won the final. Remember how important that one is. I won the final tribal. I mean, I won the final challenge to stop Brett from winning. That's that's a big one. I thought that that one would take me over the top, to tell you the truth. Now, I came here publicly and said that I understood why I didn't win Heroes versus Villains. Because they needed to be babied. That's the bottom line. These heroes and villains needed to be bait. Well, mostly heroes. They all needed to be babied on the jury. I didn't understand that. I thought they were real players of the game. Now, my fault in Heroes vs. Villains, I didn't baby the heroes that made it to, you know, to be able to vote. I didn't baby Rupert. And I think because of that, because I was so hardcore and aggressive, I get it. I understand. I don't like this aspect in the game. This you ha this aspect exists because of bitterness in life and human beings. We are human beings. The aspect of the bitter jury is because we can't accept what just happened. So we call it a bitter jury. It's a bitter, it's just a bitter jury. He's a bad, he, bad management of the jury. You should have known better. Yes, that's part of the game now. Now I understand that. You got to realize I played 19 and 20. I didn't know if I won or lost 19. So I played 20 the same way. Why would I play it any different? Why? I wouldn't. Because I just won. I didn't get to see, in my mind, I just won season 19. I'm about to win season 20, doing the same shit. So in my mind, I was playing a flawless game. I never took, in, especially in Heroes and Villains, you kind of get it when you get bitter jury with season 19 because these are all newbies and they don't really understand the game. Even though in my top 100, Laura says, I changed the game forever and I'm one of the greats. Would you say that about Natalie White, the one you voted for a million for? No, you wouldn't. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, there's that. So, in Heroes and Villains... Uh, I thought I won the game. 
I went out there thinking I was a winner. So I was even more aggressive. That's where it kind of, when the social aspect kicks in and me doing more than I was supposed to do. I think Amanda, may, maybe Amanda, I can't remember who it was, told me, you did more than you were supposed to do. You went further than you were supposed to go. Who knows where you're supposed to go? You're in a game for a million dollars. Where is that line that you're supposed to stop at? If you played for a million dollars, would there be a line where you stopped at? To win? I made sure that I won. Yes, I did the cross thing. Yes, I shook Kobe and Rupert's hand at the end. Yes, I brought them in. And guess why? So they wouldn't vote for me. That's why. The whole point of what I did was so they wouldn't vote for me at any point in any time. You can get snook in that game any time. Doesn't matter how good you are. So when you say I go too far, what does that really mean in the game, a, a game for a million dollars? You go too far. You push the lines where you don't have to. Like like what? Like burning my hat when the game is over? I didn't do anything vindictive like that. The game was over. It's over. The hat burning thing never became an issue. Not at tribal council, not nothing. It was over. But you're still going to do it? Because you're a vindictive person. I played the game. The game. I did, The only things that I regret in that game is talking trash behind the camera when it wasn't net, when that wasn't necessary, but you didn't see that. I'm talking to the players. That didn't vote for me. You didn't see when I was talking trash. To, you seen it when you got home. When you watched it. I'm talking about my dumbass girl alliance. I know it's popular. But it was not necessary for me to say. I think that it was disrespectful. Uh, I got reamed by a couple of aunts of mine. When I went to Thanksgiving. Just saying. Because it was disrespectful to women. And I, I get it. Another one was Shambo talking about her hair. Not necessary. Why would I do that? I tell you why I did that. And I knew it right after I said it. Right after they pushed me to talk about Shambo and her hair. They pushed the issue. As soon as I said it, I'm like, damn. I didn't need to say that. Cause I remember thinking I'm you know, I'm I'm already here. I don't have to be aggressive and talk behind the camera to these people that did nothing wrong to me. But I still did, and that's because I wanted camera time. I wanted to be famous. And that's what we see. We see that a lot. I just told you I do it. So don't get mad at me when I call you out for doing it. You survivors that play this game. And if you play the game, do it. Shit. You want to play again? You want to be famous? Do it. So I did things that I shouldn't have did just like Omar in his last season did things and said things that he probably shouldn't have said that really meant nothing when he said it. And it really came to nothing, but he was trying to be a character and trying to be something greater than uh, than his cast, than Survivor, than what's happening. I'm the best that ever played this game. I said that over and over and over. I'm the best that ever played this game. The difference is I said it day one. I'll be, I'll change this game forever, I told Lynn Spillman. 
She says, everybody tells me that, Russell. What makes you any different? I said, you'll see. I'll show you. You'll see. Did I not change the game? I specifically told her. I'm about to change the way people view this game. And I did. So, I think I did my part in the world of Survivor. The funny thing is, the crazy thing is, I'm going to close this out with this. Uh, just to tell you guys the respect that I got after a season... After me dominating two seasons and me playing the third season and they throw in a challenge to get rid of me. I was at Ponderosa. I, me and Krista get a connection, uh, have a connection, and I don't want to leave. I don't want to leave Ponderosa. So I tell, uh, Prope says he needs to, let's go ahead and send Russell home. We keep everybody else here because people recognize Russell and they see Russell with that gang of people. They may think that that's the cast and may take a picture of it, stuff like that. I wasn't about to have it. That's my mom, by the way. I think she's bringing, I don't know what she's bringing here, but anyway, I was like, you cannot, uh, I'm not going home. You cannot do that to me. I said, I gave my heart, and I said, let me talk to him. I'm like, I gave my heart and soul for this game. I gave my all for this game. You're not going to give me any type of luxury from this game? Like, I need this. So he was like, okay, he can stay. So, yeah, that was that. But anyway, me saying I'm the greatest player to ever play this game is me saying I had the best performance of any survivor in any game in history. Yeah, you go ahead and debate. Is he the greatest? Oh, he didn't win. He can't be. I had the biggest performance in the game of any survivor in history. Debate that. And I did it time and time and time again. In my mind, I'm the greatest to ever play. Tony got a blueprint. He got to he got to read it before he played. He got to read it before Tony played. Who did he play like? All right, guys, that's all I got for you. Until next time, let me see what my mom wants and keep hope alive.